Hello and welcome back. My name is Josh and today I wanted to go over Bluebird Bio, um, which is a biotech company that develops gene therapies. Um, it was a recommendation from one of our watchers, Pat. So shout out to Pat. Thank you for the recommendation. So <clears throat> this video won't be too long just because um, I do want to look at Bluebird Bio, but really it is a very tough uh, company to look at um, because it is an early stage biotech company. Um, a company like Walmart has pretty consistent earnings. If we actually look at uh, returns, let's go to Walmart, which I believe is WMT. And we can see here their, oops, their revenue has been pretty consistently going up for the last, this is close to 20 years. So there's some stability there. That means it's easy to project. If we go to blue, is Bluebird Bio, you can see, first of all, extremely lumpy. There's, uh, you know, massive jumps and declines in the revenue. You know, there was one quarter where suddenly they did 200 million, uh, and then the very next quarter they went down to, they went up 10x, and then they went down 10x. So again, this makes it very tough to predict what they're going to do. And I really want to use this to highlight the difficulty in, um, looking at biotech companies. So I want to look at some other ones also just to show you kind of what I mean. Here's another biotech company, uh, Axum Therapeutics. You can see here went from $3 uh, all the way up to $100. You know, that's an insane run up. Um, and then it's since, you know, then it goes back down about 75%. Um, here's another one, Axum, you know, $4 all the way up. The reason this is very common in the biotech world is because a lot of these companies, um, when they start trading, they're trading basically on a thesis. A, a, they're a science experiment. They say, hey, we think we have a way of treating a cancer or something like that. Um, and so the, the way the biotech works work stages, first they have a thesis, they work on a drug, then they test it, then they get either FDA approval or not, and then they have to commercialize it and sell it. So you can see huge swings because if you have a, you know, you say, oh, you know, we, we did a uh, study and we saw great results in our study, but the FDA denies it, then you're going to have to rework on your formula, redo another study. These are extremely expensive and that can push back the launch of a, a new drug um, by two to five years. It can be a huge setback. So that's why you see these massive drops sometimes in uh, stocks. And Bluebird actually is one of those stocks that recently saw a massive drop. You can see here it went from $20 down 44% to about 11. These are massive setbacks um, because it's not based on the actual revenues of the company. It's based on the theoretical value that this revenue could be. So, you know, let's say Bluebird says, hey, we're looking at treating cancer. So then you say, okay, what's the, or a specific kind of cancer. They're not just going to treat all cancers. We're going to look at pancreatic cancer. I'm making it up. I don't know what Bluebird is actually looking at. Um, so then you look at, okay, what is the current cost of pancreatic cancer? Um, how much do you think we could charge for this product? What's like the potential revenue we could bring by if we reduced mortality by 30%, how much would insurance companies cover, blah, blah, blah. You kind of run a model. You see what the theoretical value is. You say, how much of that could we capture? Um, and that's kind of like the theoretical potential revenues of, of a company like this. And the problem is, that, you know, it could still be a good bet. And I think I discussed this before in another video about how, you know, what what kind of game are you playing? You really have to know. Are you betting for the sure things like the Walmarts where they're slowly going to go up? Um, and obviously you have less risk, but you really got to be sure that you're not betting on a company that's going to collapse. Or are you betting on something very risky? And these biotech companies are extremely risky. But if you hit, you know, on a big winner like this, you know, one big winner can pay for 20 losers. Um, so if you have an edge and you say, oh, I really know that this company is going to do well, um, you can make a lot of money in biotech. There's, uh, I don't know if you know Martin Shkreli. Uh, he's kind of an infamous investor who bought uh, drugs, uh, pharma uh, pharmaceutical drugs, and then would jack up the price 5, 10x and, and sell it, you know, life-saving drugs. Um, and he actually did go to jail for something else, but... And that was his strategy. He actually started out by 
doing exactly this, though, betting on biotech companies because he knew that typically the day after FDA would, would say whether, similar to earnings, how you can see big movements in stocks after earnings, it's even more so with biotech. You know, if if the FDA says it's approved or if it's disapproved, you can see a massive swing in the stock price, 50%. So this is common in this industry. But if you get it right, you make a lot of money. Um, so, you know, with Bluebird, it's something very difficult to analyze from a fundamental analysis because you can't really say, oh, what are we projecting um, revenues to be? You know, we project this is the revenue and we project 10% growth. That's typically how you do it. With a biotech company, really what you have to do is you have to uh, do a risk adjusted um, analysis. So you have to say, what's the potential revenues that we're playing for? You know, oh, I think this could be a hundred million dollar revenue a year company or a bit, you know, sorry, $20 billion a year revenue. That's the market for pancreatic cancer treatments. Okay, and we think we're going to get 50% of that, so that's $10 billion a year. Um, you know, what's our margins? 20%. And then you say, what are the odds you get that? So maybe you only think the odds are 1 in 10. Um, you know, you still even if they're low odds, it could still be a great payout. Because, you know, if you say, oh, if it's 1 in 10 chance that this company 100xing, that's still a, a good bet. You know, same with uh, flipping a coin. If I told you it's a 5 to 1 payout if it's heads, it might be tails and you lost the bet, but it was still a good decision. So you have to look at it based on the decision, not based on the outcome sometimes, because again, it's about your portfolio of companies. If you have 20 of these bets and you know, eight, 18 of them might do terrible, but the, the two that do well might pay for all the, the winners. So again, for me, this company is just a little too hard to analyze. And it's because of the industry. Biotech is very tough to analyze, especially early stage biotech. If you're looking at a Pfizer, uh, Pfizer, Nephrogens, revenue. Let's look at this. You can see here the revenue is far more consistent. Still lumpy. You can see, you know, you're not seeing this level of volatility where you're going up and down 10x. Um, you know, and one of the reasons why you will still see lumpiness in their revenues is because of patents. So this is another thing you have to be aware of with biotech companies is if you have a, let's say you create a, a drug that, uh, you know, whatever it is, it, it does something, it cures cancer, uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, you get a patent on it for a certain amount of time. I believe it's 20 years, but don't quote me on that. Again, I'm not, uh, I'm not a scientist. I don't invest typically in biotech companies. Um, so for those 20 years, you have exclusive rights to that. And you can also make deals with other companies to sell generics and get a cut of it, you can license it. But after those 20 years, basically anyone is able to take the formula you created and create knockoff versions um, uh, called generics. So a generic drug. So this is this recently happened to Viagra. Viagra is a brand name drug. If we actually look at Viagra, the actual drug is called Sildenafil, um, but the brand name is Viagra. So now, in the last year, the Viagra patent, here we go, Viagra patent expiration expired in 2020, which is why you saw a huge lift in the number of these direct-to-consumer companies, Hims. Um, what's the other one? There's another one that was like that. Hims versus Keeps. I think Keeps and Roman, uh, they all started creating knockoff versions of Viagra and sell direct-to-consumer, so they're selling a generic version. So this is a major risk to pharmaceutical companies because, uh, you know, they basically have the exclusive rights to sell this product for 20 years, which means they can have huge margins. Uh, and then once generics come in, that typically pushes margins way down. So they can still sell Viagra. Viagra is still available. But instead of being the only one, now there's competitors, which typically pushes the price down, which pushes margins down. So you have to be aware of that. You know, you, these companies can be very lumpy. So you have to look at what their uh, pipeline of new drugs is. How many drugs are in early stage um, where they're still in the research phase? How many are awaiting approval? How many are in approval but are you know, doing a research study? So there's the, the drug pipeline. So you really have to understand that with biotech, there's a completely different way of looking at these companies. You really want to make sure, this is my big thing, know your game. I like to invest in tech because I understand tech. You know, People who understand financials should understand the financials. Now, a bank is pretty similar to an insurance company, but it might be completely different from a tech company, and it's completely different from a, a pharmaceutical company. So each, each industry kind of has its own idiosyncrasies. 
So make sure you're aware of these. And this is why, again, if it's a big company like Pfizer, you can, you can do an analysis of it, but you have to be aware of the risks involved. But for smaller companies that aren't yet revenue, have huge hit drugs, uh, this is a really a hit-driven industry where if you have one hit drug, it can make a big difference for 20 years. And if we actually look at Bluebird, you can see they probably got, they got a ton of momentum all the way up to 158 and then down. And this was probably because they got some great news about a drug, uh, but it didn't end up panning out. Uh, the other news that I will note on this company is that they actually spun out. Uh, what was the other company they spun out? They spun out another company, here we go, called 270 Bio, uh, at, which is an oncology unit. And they actually spun that out, which you can see here. And that's actually up since uh, they spun it out just a couple days ago. Started at 26, bumped up to 32, and now it's up to, to 41 today. So it's up a, a decent amount already. Um, again, to me, this is still too speculative. This is probably their best performing division, which is why they spun it out. Um, and it focuses on something different. But to me, uh, again, this is too tough to analyze. I really like, when I do an analysis, I try to analyze what are the revenues, what are the potential profit margins, what are the potential growth, and that's how I analyze it. Um, with biotech, a big company like Pfizer, I could probably analyze. A very small company, could I analyze it? Yes, but I wouldn't do a good job. And I think this is a big part of it. investing is knowing your strengths, what you're good at, what you're bad at. And when you say this is just too complex. And for me, this is just too complex to analyze. If you were a scientist or you were very involved in biotech and you really understood the ins and outs, you would have an edge over most people and you would be able to invest in this. Um, otherwise, to me, it's just a bit of gambling now you could still kind of speculate and try and ride the momentum uh, you know clearly you can see here there's a good trend maybe you say I'm a momentum trader I think it's going to keep going up uh, or to me more accurately I think it's better to try and ride these waves down and say you know what I see this pretty clear when, when a biotech company does poorly you can really see it go poorly for a while um, and I actually did speculate on a company a while ago it's called iBio so I want to use this I think this was, uh, you can see here, look at this massive spike. It went, it was about 10 cents. And again, another one where you can see this big ride down, down 94%. And then they launched some news that they're working on a COVID-19 pill, I think it was. And you can see it shot up uh, 800% and then up again, you know, 2000% in six months. I think I probably bought around here, about a buck 50, shot up to... Uh, you know, I, I sold a little here, held it, thought it would go up again, went down again, went up to here, 242. I sold at 242, and you can see now it's back down to 80 cents. These companies are very volatile because they're very much based on not their revenues that are the drivers, but these external factors such as, you know, uh, what the FDA is doing, um, how research is going. Um, there's a lot of factors that they can't control. You know, even if even if it gets approved, First, it's got to get approved. Uh, the research has to do well. Maybe it's got approved, but it just isn't that effective. Maybe it's a competitor. Maybe it's too hard to produce, so they can't produce it effectively. That goes back to um, Elon Musk said something about you know, there's a ton of EV companies out there. And he said anyone can build a prototype. The really tough part is scaling. Now, with biotech, it's a little easier to scale, but sometimes people create a product and it's approved, but there's just not the market they thought there was. Uh, so there's a lot of issues that can can happen with this because you're creating the product before you have the sales. You don't yet have sales. So this has been my analysis of Bluebird, but more broadly, it's my way of kind of explaining the world of investing in biotech and the potential risks. And again, for me, Bluebird Bio is just a little too complex for me to look at. I try to stick to my strengths. And again, know yourself. What are your strengths? Maybe you can analyze this and you say, you know what, I think the recent news was uh, is overstated. You know, I think that it's going to bounce back. Maybe that's the case. But for me, uh, Bluebird is just not in my wheelhouse, too complex. And um, the whole industry is, is, is hard to analyze unless you're really an expert. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Are you investing in Bluebird? Any other biotech companies? Are you a scientist or someone who invests in biotech? If so, I'd love to connect because I, I really do want to learn more about some of these industries I don't know as well. Um, and again, this is really the goal of this channel is for me to learn more about uh, investing and some companies and industries that I'm not as familiar with. And hopefully you got some value out of that too. Thanks so much and talk to you next time. Cheers.